So that is the trio of doom right there. Oh, man. Yeah. So today I want to do a video, a little overview about the three blasters and what are its advantages and disadvantages. If in this group, if you want to include like a really powerful long shot or a brass dual strike magnum, that's also a pretty good, pretty good blasters to put in this group. Okay. Um, but my bed isn't that big, so <laughs> I decided to, and I didn't, well, okay, I created the Brass Dual Strike Magnum, but I didn't create, like, the Zeus Long Shot or anything like that, okay, so, um, yeah, so we've, this thing is holding up really great, it's got a Turf 18.5 in it, just like the Bird of Prey, and it's doing the same ranges, it's a really great blaster. It it is big. I mean, you can see it compared to like a bird of prey, which of course is about as long. Well, actually, it's a little shorter as you can see, but it is smaller. The smaller footprint blaster by far. If you take the barrel off, you can fit it in your coat pocket, which used to be a real asset before certain places got metal detectors. But now that they do, well, it's a little tougher. Um, this Bird of Prey was a blaster originally built to shoot from uh, from high-rise buildings and like far away, but typically high-rise. And I realized that if if a, if a, if a, if a um, if an ultra match had just a little more umps to it, it would do great. The first incarnation was the M, and the M was able to shoot from you know pretty much from the top of a twenty-seven story building and and pretty much hit what I want. But a suggestion of a long shot too made it better. Of course, I don't do that kind of shit anymore. Where I now I, I do more it more for games, and between rounds, Bird of Prey is a crowd pleaser. It really is. How does it compare to a Chronomag? How's the Chronomag compared to that? Okay. <clears throat> well, first off, on a Bird of Prey, your catch area is smaller. It means that you have to, it has to have a, um, a more powerful catch spring. It means it's going to have more um, pressure per square inch on the catch. And what that does is it makes, of course, have a little bit harder trigger pull. You can pull some really amazing shots of the Bird of Prey. The accuracy in a, in a, if in a sandbag rest mechanical where it doesn't move the blaster at all once firing is second to none. I've never seen such an accurate blaster uh, than a Bird of Prey, even, even, even everything else. It's just a really accurate blaster. The problem is... It's finicky. Um, you really have to know how to deal with that tight trigger. It's also light. It's going to have a lot of recoil to it. The heavier barrel, the aluminum helps, but it's still a small little pistol. I mean, it's it is. It's if you think about it, it's just basically a uh, ovalized fire strike is what it is, and because of that, it's small. But you, you can still get the most amazing shots from these. Uh, the, the dart stability is absolutely fantastic. Whatever you point at it when, you, when the trigger breaks is whatever it's going to hit. I mean, even at 60 yards, it's whatever it's going to hit. And so you pretty, you pretty much know when you're firing it, okay, that's, I'm going to hit them or I'm going to miss them if you look at your sights really, really well. It works really good with a red dot sight, but... If I'm doing uh, if I if I'm doing a duplex with a turret, for example, it will. Uh, you really don't want a red dot because your aiming positions are going to be different. However, turreted, this thing's shotguns like you would not believe. You've got the one shot that goes a little slower than the brass barrel, not much. You're you're trading maybe maybe 20, 30 feet per second. For, for that barrel, but you're also getting three more barrels like a shotgun, and that's very valuable. That is extremely valuable. You can just waffle people from 130 feet away with darts, or a group of people. If you're playing a really big war, and you got and you can shotgun this, oh man, you can take out like multiple people at a time. The last Singapore war I went to was at a paintball field, and I was allowed to use the bird of prey in shotgun mode, and I was one shot where I hit like three people and they went out. <laughs> Oh, it was great. It was great. It was like, whoa. You know? A one dart went way out, and the other two hit two people, and they, it was like the defending team just was decimated. There was like eight people on the, on the defend, eight or ten people on the defending team, and they were decimated. So, Bird of Prey, it still has like a role. 
It does. It, it's still a really great blaster. It's still something I would take to a war. It's still a really wonderful crowd pleaser. It's still a great test platform for barrels, darts, other things, which which using something singled and testing it out is really good for. But let's move to the Chrono Mag. Chrono Mag has, has some pretty good advantages. Um, number one, Speed Hook makes it primable, although it's still not as easy to prime as a Bird of Prey in the same yield. It is still manageable, okay? Um, it has um, a much nicer trigger to it um, than, than Bird of Prey because the, the catch area is, is 10 millimeters. This is really cool because what it does, just like your long shot has a wide catch area, a Chrono Mag has a catch area. Well, instead of being arched, it's flat. But it it can hold up to such yields. I tested it once at 25, and it was able to fire. That was a 16 uh, cut down turf and a, 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 a 9 um, stampede, turf spring. And it fired great. It fired fine. It was extremely hard to prime, but it was... Um, the trigger had no problem with it with a long shot catch spring. You have to trim the inside of the fins of the catch in order to use the long shot catch springs. But it, there's really no reason to go back after that. Even if you go back to a Kronos with a normal yell, there's no reason. You know, it's long. Um, whenever I go like outside to go shoot it, I'm usually tucking this between my arms and I'm usually hitting like the door behind me with this barrel. It's very big barrel. I mean, the barrel you can see it's almost as long as the rest of the blaster. But you need and and the one that is being made for a friend that's that's uh, being made for a very past due over commission um is actually about an inch longer than that. So, and it's going to probably be even more effective than this one. And so far it's it's a better blaster than even the the first one I made. But, you know, the first one's always the first one. Just like the first Mauser Fire has packed v mags, and I refuse to make it Katanas for the simple reason of its, its, its legacy. This is, this is a very historical piece right here, because this piece uh, actually uh, sold the idea of the Katana mag to Jet Blasters, and sold the idea of the Archer to Jet Blasters. So that's staying where it is. Um, the Chrono Mag advantage is that you got the same kind of power as a bird of prey only you don't have a, because it's a magazine fed of course you don't have the potential accuracy bird of prey has a lot of control with the loading um the way you load the darts really does determine where it ends up on a chrono mag it's you're 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 just stuffing it with a pusher with a bird of prey you're pushing it in with your fingers and trust me it makes that much of a difference especially when you got the mags that are crushing the darts and changing the, the, the outside of the dart. On a bird of prey, you pull them out of your pocket, and if you got some really good pack Ds or something, you can hit anything with a bird of prey. Okay? And rate of fire doesn't really matter when you're sniping, because Chronomag, it, it's like, okay, I can load really fast, but most of my time is going to be spent on aiming. Okay? And it is. A Chronomag saves you uh, maybe a few seconds, a couple seconds. Uh, it saves you with the loading... But it's you still have to aim it is the whole thing, you know. And when you're aiming it far away, you're not trying to unload on people. The the nice thing about the Chrono Mag, however, is that you can close quarters with this thing, and it's probably going to be brutal, okay. But for close quarters, even better than that would be the Mauser fire, which is the reason I broke this out. A Chrono Mag is just too big to holster. Sure, it could be done. Um, but you would have this big, long barrel thing sticking on the side of your body. And, well, I'm all for reducing bulk. Okay, that, that long barrel would stick almost to your kneecap. And, well, it's just not a handy blaster. Mauser Fire is a handy blaster. 150 to 170 feet per second. It's also good for lower velocity wars where you're going to run into problems where, okay, bringing in like a 320 foot per second Chrono Magnum or a Bird of Prey would be a little much. Yeah, actually, I think the Chrono Mag is doing 300 to 320, but I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure. It could be faster than that. The last range test was 227 feet. Ah, that is insane. Flat range of 227 with no sun, meaning that the what usually happens outside, and you'll see the phenomenon, is let's say you go on a freshly watered grass, okay? A blaster that's pulling 200 will pull 160. 70, 180, because the air is sinking. Let's say you go on pavement, okay, hot pavement. 
A blast that's normally doing 200 will do 210, but you'll notice it will arch. So you usually have to point the blaster down a bit to get the 200 and to get the flat range. Well, the best time to test, which was the time I tested with the Chronomag, is when it was overcast. The ground wasn't warm at all. It, was, it wasn't giving off a thermal. It was neutral. Neutral range tests are the best. It also wasn't windy outside. Um, wind, even if, the, if you have a tailwind, it still makes makes it makes the range less it it does i've I've proven that it, it brings it down by about five feet or so it does because it disturbs the dart and flight and remember we're dealing with ultra light projectiles we're not dealing with heavy projectiles that have a carry to them that are influenced by the wind and influenced by the air and the thermals around that's the difference with nerf compared to airsoft or paintball well except airsoft airsoft actually yeah I've seen people shoot snipers where in the shade it's going one direction and then all of a sudden it'll hit the sun it will do that. Yeah. The the Mauser fire has the advantage as holstered. It's faster rate of fire because you're using a lighter yield and it's a pretty good handy blaster for shooting around corners and stuff. As where a chrono mag, it is like a long shot. It's a big gun. It's a big blaster. You have, you have a little bit of the disadvantages of the fact it's a big gun, but compared to a caliber... Or, like, a long shot. I mean, if you were to compare it to those, this thing is half the size. In pistol terms, it's big, but in rifle terms, it's tiny. It's tiny. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, uh, putting a, uh, uh, a stock on here. Uh, Skyler from Manhattan Beach Nerf League actually came up with a really great idea. He showed me a sledgefire stock and said, hey, look at this. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that would fit. So, this thing is definitely a good battle, battle, battle blaster. But the Mauser fire, oh man, I remember the first time I took that at a war. It was um, there was the Satosa Island War. Um, I think the War of Coconuts they called it. Yeah, and there's a there's a shot that uh, one of the people who works at uh, Black Tactical actually shot between me and Titan, and he had a two S. Um, a, a 2S, oh, what do they call that blaster? The operator, I think they called it. Yeah. It was the one with the with the little clear thing on it. It, it was like a Strife, but it had a stock in it. Yeah, it was the new Nerf. And I was fighting Bird of Prey. I ran out of ammo for the Bird of Prey, so I just dropped to the Mouse of Fire. It was the last round. And um, Ty thought I was out of ammo, so he charged me, and I ran around a sign, and I shot. I saw his foot. On the other side of the sign, I shot it. Just boom, and I got it. And this thing was like, oh, man, this is so handy. I mean, even a bird of prey is a big blaster. I couldn't, well, first off, with a front-loading blaster, even like an old trench fire strike, you just don't have that kind of round available where you can fire one shot, load, and fire the next. But the other thing is, it's small, it's handy, it's very easy to just point. It's accurate. Everything on it is built in line, like, Here's, here's your tube, your pusher's in here, your pusher's hooked to this, this is hooked to that. Everything is mechanically chained together, so it just lines up. As for the chronomag, well, that's not the case. Your your tube's in here, that, that's in there, the pusher's in there. It doesn't really, it doesn't have the same kind of form and function that a Mauser fire has. Um, it's, it's, it's also, a chronomag is actually easier to build than a Mauser fire. Mauser fire is actually very hard to build. Uh, you have a lot of laminating you have to do. There's a lot of cutting you have to do, and the tolerance in here is very tight. It has to be, with a mag spacing, has to be perfect, or you're going to junk the whole shell when you build it. A chrono mag is a little more forgiving, because it doesn't have any plastic around where the breech would be. Your breech is defined by the brass and the pusher. So basically, once you set your brass and your pusher in the right place, then you just put it, and then you just glue those in, you glue in your magazine... It's easier to build because of that. Also, you don't have to, unless you're doing some really wildcat mod, you don't have to do anything to your trigger catch other than a bigger catch spring and, and, your, and your plunger. That's it. That's all you have to do. Nothing. Okay? Mauser Fire has that kind of advantage, too, because it's a pivot, if it's a pivot catch. But Bear to Prey, you got to do tons of modifications, just tons to make it work. Bear to Prey is one of the hardest blasters to build by far, but it's one of the most rewarding. The other thing, though, is I like the Bird of Prey. I have some real memories with it. And yes, this is a blaster I've owned 
for in August, August 17th of 2018. It will be five years that I have ran with a bird of prey. Four years that I have ran with a, um, a bird of prey with um, a bird of prey type L. So in 2018, the bird of prey is going to be a an old design. Yeah. So I have some really good memories. One memory I got to tell you, and this, this, this kind of is a good case for the bird of prey right here. Okay. One day I was between darts. In other words, between orders. As, as you know, my original uh, supplier of darts, high performance darts was Explore. Um, they were blue foam and they were uh, X darts. Okay. And at the time the bird of prey was doing somewhere in the 220 to 30 range. Okay. Wasn't too fast, but it was fast for a modded stock. It was, it was an absolute killer. It was artillery, literally. Nowadays, the bird of prey can do them in the 300, 320s. Um, I've seen shots, uh, going through a chrono as high as 340. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty hairy. Okay. But back then. Uh, it was about 2.30. So really, uh, an X-Dart was still a, a good dart for a bird of prey back then. It was before I waxed the barrels. It was before I fine-tuned it and everything else. Well, I only had 12 darts. <laughs> 12. Okay, my dude, 12. Okay, nobody else was shooting Stefan at the war, which was good, but I had 12 darts. And one shot, let me, let me tell you why I don't go with full length, because one shot, I fired out of the, out of the barrel... It goes, for some reason, it hit the air wrong, went straight up, and about seven, eight seconds later, went straight down about 15 feet in front of me. <laughs> it, like, hit that aerodynamic hole of the dart. It hit it perfectly, and it just, boom! I was like, ah, oh, shit, you know? And the other guy had, like, a, he had a, um, the other, he had a stampy, actually, a stampede. And I had to fire, and I, I grabbed another elite dart, and I just loaded it running from him, and then I turned around, I fired, and I nailed him. But it was, yeah, quite humiliating. What I did in that war was very simple. I would fire at one enemy, take him down, and then where I was firing him at, I would try to look around for my darts. And the rest of the crew moved around that same area, too. They didn't really, nobody really realized I didn't have that many darts until about the end of the war. Uh, and that round I lost very savagely, and I I just would pick up rounds. But I, I of the twelve rounds I took, I I still had nine of my rounds left at the end of the at the end of the game. But it was still that's less than ten darts, you know. And it often took me a few shots to hit somebody from far away, even with a scope, even with it dialed in everything. But the fact of the matter is, I could show up with a war with twelve darts and actually compete. I could do that with a bird of prey. I doubt I could do that with a chrono bag. You would throw away your first 12 darts in seconds, okay? You would throw it away in less than a minute, okay? That's less than one magazine. Uh, these are 15 rounders. That's less than one magazine. I couldn't do that. A Mauser fire, well, same thing. I'm kind of throwing it away like candy. And if I shotgun it, well, I actually showed up with 15 rounds uh, and this thing and this thing, just a demo. The bird of prey just has to shoot between rounds, so I was able to load this three by three by three by three one round. But then after that, I, the turret was useless, and I went I went to my uh, my Chronos blasters, you know, my my Deadpool's. Yeah, but um, yeah, same problem. I had to throw it away. But it did it did get me a few kills in the beginning of the round. It gave me like like two kills in the beginning of the round. Um, I was able to shotgun three shots at somebody and nail them. Um, but singled, you can actually get away with it. I've done it before. Um, that one time was an extreme case. One time I showed up with, I think, 25 rounds to a war. And that was better. I could actually manage that. But it was the still aggressive picking up darts, firing one area, picking up darts, trying to get that area you fired at, and then go and picking up darts. And when, it, and when a group would move out of that area, you'd go, oh, good, I could pick up darts and do that. But... Ideally, for a bird of prey, you want at least 100 rounds, at least 100 Stephens. But it really does, it shows you that, you know, if, you, if you're if you good with a bird of prey, and you can shoot one shot at a time like a good shooter does, you really could, like, go with very few darts and, and play in a war. It's not that hard. I mean, how many people have 
played Rockets in a War, or even better, uh, an Arrow Storm. <clears throat> like, for example, before I ordered another half quiver of, of, of arrows, I learned six arrows, okay? And back then, it really taught you to shoot conservatively, as well as the sharpshooter taught you to, to shoot conservatively, because, well, finding extra darts was very hard back then. And if they did, they were very expensive. They were, you know, as much as the blaster, if not more. So, like, a pack of darts would be about a pack of six or 12 darts or whatever. So, it's kind of like bringing it back to those ages. A, a bird of prey brings you back and shows you what this is all about. What was this founded on, you know? This is why I really love the bird. But the Chronomag, oh boy, this thing is just crazy nuts great. I mean, the, it's either these two or these two and a war. I will tell you that right now. I love the Brass Dual Strike Magnum, but it kind of let me down last game because I tried to shoot it for full length, and even though I took it outside my yard and was able to shoot it, when I got to the war, I wasn't able to shoot it. And I wasn't able to find those that Adventure Force ammo I was looking for that didn't have the hole in it. Uh, you know, a Dual Strike with the proper motivation can do 200 of full length and 280 with, with Stefan, you know. But uh, it's also big. I mean, this thing, I couldn't even put it in my trunk. I was afraid of bending the stock. I did that one war where I actually bent the stock and I had to re-glue it. So I put it in the front seat of my car. And there was this guy that was that was driving by, and he just looked down like, oh, shit, he's got a gun. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm driving through North Hollywood, you know, on the 170, going to a war. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> that guy thinks I have a gun, and not only do I have a gun, I'm crazy enough to paint my gun. Also, it's a happy colors, just to make it look more of a fun little killing spree. Yeah, I could just see it in his eyes. And I just turned, put on my radio, drove off. You know, I was just like, oh, shit. But at any rate, this is Chris Cartea saying, don't you go changing. And, um, yeah. Those are the differences between the three. Uh, but to sum it up, this is handy, faster rate of fire, can be holstered. This one has a lighter trigger, um, high rate, higher rate of fire, and not as high as a Mauser, but, but that's because of the spring load. I put a real heavy spring load in there. And, but it can take katanas, and it's very, it's very powerful, but not nearly as accurate as the bird. It has a lower rate of fire, the tighter trigger, but really brings you back to the days where we started playing Nerf. Where if you are good at playing in the old days, you have one thing that in the old days you didn't have, and that was range. And that means you had 440 feet uh, of arid denial with a bird of prey. And you could accurately hit them. And although you would throw away more ammo with a chronomag, maybe about twice as much. I would say a bird of prey and a chronomag is kind of like comparing the M82 Barrett with the moving barrel and has about half the accuracy. That means it takes twice the CTC to hit, and hit at a thousand yards as a bird of prey. Um, a bird of prey would be like an M95 bolt action where you have half the CTC because that barrel doesn't move and it's bolt action, the Barrett M95 uh, 50 caliber. Um, the difference, however, of course, being rate of fire and of course being um, shot recovery that you can fire more sustained uh, rounds at the outfield. And I don't know which one would work better yet. I have never had two blasters that were close together other than a bird of prey and a, and a, and a big blue. you know. And when I did it with, with big blue, I liked the bird of prey better, right? Because it was smaller and it, it was more accurate. But, but the chronomag is definitely more accurate than an aluminum barrel long shot by far. So it's kind of like twice the accuracy of, let's say, a long shot. But I'm still wondering, well, I like it better than a bird. I might. I might not. I don't know. We're going to find out on Armageddon. But this thing is just insane great. So don't you go changing or I'll find you. That's right. Anyone crazy use... Use, use marker to label his blasters? Well, you should look out.